We are young, we are powerful, but we are female, we, we are, are Muslims. Muslims. We are Sister Speak, destroying the stereotype of stigmatized Muslim women. Assalamu alaikum everyone, and you're listening to Sister Speak on a podcast. Yay! <laughs> Yay! The excitement is like here in the air right now. Um, anyways, you're here with me, Faiza. Me, Amina. And me, Mariam. And it's very different because this is our follow-up podcast to our introduction of how we have now moved to podcast platforms as well as being on the radio. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for us as well to continue doing podcasts on on such a platform. So, yeah, I, yeah. Don't know. I agree because I think podcasts is the future. I mean, other... Muslims, for example, Freshly Grounded, yeah. they do podcasts and it's really popular. And I think you have more of a um, flexibility yeah. to talk about and We are the topics. future. <laughs> and um, we have more time as well, which is something that we struggle yeah. with our li live shows. So, And we can discuss a broader range of topics that directly relate to us girls, which need to be spoken about and which need to be discussed and not just for ourselves, but like for those girls who don't have a voice necessarily or who are afraid to maybe even discuss such topics, which brings us to today's topic, which is menstruation or, or periods, periods or, or that time of the month. That time, yeah. Whatever you want to call Nature, it. Mother Nature or the bane of your month or monthly existence. Yeah, or there's something. lots of words for it. I'm sure we yeah. all have them particularly we will be discussing um the cultural perspective I of menstruation and periods mm -hmm. because i feel it's very important especially in our culture and in our society as well the different perspectives that we have regarding periods especially between the elder generation and the younger generation so firstly guys we all get periods <laughs> no yeah. surprise um how do we feel about them <laughs> How do you feel about them? <laughs> yeah. Like, I rage because the pain surrounding that particular time of the month is horrible. It's, oh, like, why must I get this pain? Uh, I just, <laughs> the, uh, I feel like we can just go we'll have a separate podcast for how Literally we feel about them. Because it's to the feelings <laughs> surrounding. It's just <laughs> not great. Mm. And it's not even, like, that weak for some people. Like, for me... Sometimes the week before is like PMS, basically emotional and mental pain, and then and it's she's physical crying. pain. I agree, I agree. I think it's, it's and it's so confusing, and people think it throws one, you off. Yeah, it? and you yeah. know why you feel like that, but yeah. the same just simply because you know why doesn't mean you can stop it. If that mm. makes sense, I feel like we haven't jumped into this part of the podcast yet. But one misconception is. People are like, oh my God, ugh, are you on your period? Pain, you like. must be on your period. But it's like, yeah, but it's still... Like, what, what's your point? <laughs> it's still... <laughs> you know uh, what I mean? <laughs> this is still going to happen whether I'm like, yeah. whether I'm aware of it or not. Yeah. And I think it's just, it's awful as well. Like, even before that time of the month, you know, occurs, mm. you get all these feelings like you're having a good month so far and then boom, it's like the week before and... You feel sore, you feel tender and like you just want to cry and you're angry, but then you're like hangry mm. and then like you just want to binge and you just don't want anything to do with anyone. If anything goes wrong, Your it's the end of the world. Literally. 100%. It just throws amazing. you off. I feel like a weak little girl, like from going to being perfectly fine to being a weak little girl <laughs> during and this time. For me, it's, it's a lot. It's a ro ro um, yeah. roller coaster of emotions. I and just, it's unfair. And then when I react and I'm thinking, oh, this is not me. Yeah. This is just, I just can't Aww. deal with it in that week. But everything, I just become so emotionally reactive to. Yeah. Like, what did we do, please, to deserve such pain? Do you guys <laughs> all get period pain? Yeah, yeah I get it. Yeah. I is, think it like some, suffer, is it really bad yeah, people like I black out like I nearly fainted in my lecture yeah uh, some months are, are worse than others like sometimes I think I went a few months without having it and I was like this isn't too bad but you know when you, <laughs> when you say that then it hits you the next time like anytime with any situation if you say this isn't too bad it's like yeah it is <laughs> you know the girls that don't get it honestly you're the heroes 
of this world <laughs> but you're not normal because honestly <laughs> I don't know how you cannot have any pain but we the rest of us majority of us I feel have pain mm. even if it is for like a couple of hours like how do you not feel pain I think uh, the way we deal with it is really different individually. Is it a mm. mental thing, do you think? No. I think, well, I it's think, a bit of both. No, it's emotional. The you have obviously hormonal imbalances, which obviously will make you feel emotional. I mean, some people react in anger. Some react in sadness. Some people just react to everything, which is me. Um, <laughs> but I think it's just understanding yourself because, you know, once you kind of understand, okay, this is the time of the month and it's going to be happening soon, you kind of know not to do things that not push your buttons or yeah. things that trigger you and I think that's general advice if you know yourself well enough you know things that will trigger you and you know when to ste take a step back because for me sometimes especially in that time if I if something triggers me I will probably cry for an hour straight and Aww. I won't understand why so it's just kind of knowing yourself yeah definitely I think it's a bit weird having this as our like the second like podcast but to the first but it's something we need to jump right in and yeah just... might as well and this is the topic we've chosen yeah so moving on the cultural perspective periods what do you see it as so I think the cultural perspective um something that uh, one aspect that I want to touch upon is the aspect of modesty yeah um no but like what do you see it as like I, I is think, it something that I think just... people see it as shame it's something that's really? shameful. Shame. Yeah, so it's something in shameful. And then it's we definitely see taboo. I think, mm. yeah, it's taboo and it's shameful. And I think that manifests, especially in Ramadan, which we'll be discussing yeah. further on in the podcast. Yeah. But uh, what do you see it as? I'd say that's how it's perceived culturally. Well, in yeah. our culture, like our South Asian culture, which we're familiar with, it is seen as something shameful or, you know, disgusting. So, yeah, something that shouldn't be spoken about. Mm. Do you guys see that though? Do you guys agree with that? I think, as I said before, I only see it in Ramadan because that's when I have to. Or when. But what I do you see it as? What do you see? No, but as in, do you appeal. agree in terms of the fact that it's something shameful that shouldn't no, be spoken about? No, of course not. It's, it's something natural. It's something that is given to women, and in fact, if you didn't have periods, you wouldn't able to. People wouldn't able to conceive. Have, yeah. So you know, it's actually a blessing. So you. So sense. you don't. No, I in personally, it. I don't see it. I don't see why it's perceived yeah. in such a negative way. Um, no, I Amina? wouldn't. I wouldn't agree with it either. It's just, it's just a part of our life. Can you understand the perspective people come from when they see it as shameful or disgusting or something they don't want to talk about? I see. I un I can see how it's happened and how it's come about that way. Yeah. And I feel like it's deeply rooted in in our culture because. of many different reasons just yeah. and our culture being the asian culture as yeah. well yeah I, I don't want to speak for anyone else's yeah. culture because i don't know mm. but um yeah i think it's just it's a problem that is you know has been around for generations i feel because you know women have not been able to have a voice mm. uh, so they don't get to you know decide on what people think of what they're going mm. through. I just, I just think it's weird for um, men to be able to, to tell us that it's, you know, it's mm. shameful. You shouldn't. No one should talk about it's it. Yeah. And yeah, it depends how we talk about it. And yeah. The way we're speaking about it now is not going to be shameful because we. I mean, there's so many women out there. We all have mm -hmm. a lot. Most of us have periods. So if no one's speaking about it, then how do you expect? I mean, some girls start their period as young as eight or nine years old and if we don't talk about it then how do we expect them to know how to deal with it in any way like forget about like for now we'll just forget about the religious perspective of it how would we uh, um, expect young girls to know how to deal with their period just in terms of hygiene if no one talks about mm, it I believe that I believe that as well because you know when I first started my period I wasn't entirely sure what was happening to me and I felt I felt embarrassed to ask like what what is this and why is my body feeling like this and is it okay to ask etc etc yeah um and um 
I think it's really important that people we have some some this type of content because you know young people inshallah will be listening to this and they see that there's someone out there that resonates with them um and especially you know how much are they going to google how, how do you deal with this how do you deal with that I think they need people that are representative of them to talk about issues that they that are affecting them but that can share um and I don't know just understand what they're going through because mm. it's it's difficult I mean even in terms of cultural perspective in the way we um understand periods and the way we are treated and even the community itself it's going to be different from one community to another so if we're discussing it especially because we're all south asian here I think for for young people it's it's a, it's a really good step forward for them to kind of learn and have a, some sort of education from us because we've been through it and we've learned along the way so i think in that sense it's really important to have that this platform definitely <clears throat> now when it comes to the cultural perspective we're going to be looking at different types different areas per se mm -hmm. so one of the areas being modesty mm. now when it comes to periods especially being muslims as well it's very important that periods be a part of our modesty mm. so you know being hygienic being not being loud about it not being so like oh, i'm on my <laughs> yeah like do you understand what i I'm think i don't from? want anyone to um like misinterpret what yeah. we're doing here we don't, we're not trying to force it down yeah. anyone's throat mm. like but it's like we're just trying to share experiences so then when a young person who is experiencing things for the first time they understand that they're not alone because we yeah. all have a dish, di individual way of understanding it and mm. i think it's not we're not just discussing it for the for no reason yeah we're trying to educate we're trying to share those experiences so when someone exactly. else listens to it and it shouldn't they be feel seen, empowered yeah. that this and them they're not alone it should not be seen as something that's disgusting shameful or like we can't even speak about it mm. because i feel like in certain communities you know you you can't speak about it at all because it's just something that's like you, you should stay silent on you shouldn't even ask whereas Nowadays, you need to ask certain questions regarding, you know, periods like, what if you're not getting them? What if you have, I don't know, what, what if it's irregular? You know, what if something's what if it's wrong? Like, what if it's too heavy? Even yeah. that's bad for your health. I think there's a lot of things. And it's normally where, just like, oh, it's normal, it's normal. Like, yeah, and I think if, if we, if ignoring it is teaching young girls to not be vocal about it, to not ask, you know, a a parent or like an older sister or anyone about an issue they're having like if you're in when you're young you don't know what's normal and what's not and if we're mm. if we're seeing um the women in our families who are older than us not being vocal then it, I feel like it just teaches these girls that okay well if I'm going through a certain thing and I don't get it it's like I'm gonna have to deal with it because no one's talking yeah. about it, and, and then that who could can be you go to as well. Yeah, that could be dangerous also because there, there's a lot of different issues that uh, we we may have all come across, or we know someone who's had them with their period that you're gonna need to see a doctor for. And if we are based well, yeah, pe pretty much teaching young girls not to talk about it, then it can be really dangerous for them. Because it's not something that you should feel shy about, especially mm. woman to woman, hmm. you know? And I feel like some like elders, they'll just be like, now, yeah, this is what you do. That's it. Now go. Hmm. Like, it's not something that if if you feel this pain, you know, tell me if it's like a certain flow, tell me, you know, the cleanliness of it as well. And also that whole taboo about um, wearing tampons is haram. I hmm. don't know. In like... I feel like in the Asian community, that's it's like a widely known yeah. kind of like misconception that apparently tampons are haram. Yeah, and I, I haram, was, right? Right? I'm yeah, I was. Really I was told. I was. I heard a that few people. And I was a bit. Sorry. Yeah, like at school <laughs> like and things. Yeah, I did um, hear of it, but I don't really know where that came from. So yeah, I only heard of it in school. I, I, to be honest, I only. I just was like, okay, yeah, maybe it is, because I didn't know any better. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm. When we, no one tells us, we don't know. But then I recently was like, okay, but but why? So I did my research and I later found out that it's not. I, I, I think we need to uh, take it upon ourselves when we have a question to do our research and find Definitely. out what it is. And then with that, 
we need to share it with everyone yeah. too. Because I just asked my mom, and my mom's like laughing at me. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, like, like so why like, are you laughing? And she was like, who said that? Like, why would they say something like that? Because mm. it, it, it's just weird. I think it it's just, maybe it wasn't, maybe tampons aren't a normal thing in our culture. Mm. So they, so coming to the West, they're seeing this and it's abnormal. So they're like, well, so we I think don't there's do probably that. a lot of things that happens. I think if they see a West, a Western thing happening, they automatically assume it's haram because... Are tampons a Western thing? I don't know, it's because it's question. something, it's not accepted. But are they? <laughs> no, but it's not something that it was familiar with the Asian community because... No, sanitary pads are available everywhere in every Asian country. Sanitary pads, yeah, that's yeah. True. So, so a different type is almost outlandish. Like, what but there is are this? so many different types of protection in terms of when it comes to periods. Like, um, mm-hmm. there's just, it's not just tampons and sanitary pads. It's like the cup thing as well. Which yeah, there's I a lot more. Like, now. That sounds weird, but like, I think there's a lot more eco-friendly ones yeah. these days. But I don't know. But I guess you're right. That's true because sanitary pads are everywhere. Yeah. Maybe they consider it a westernized thing, and it's not something. I think because it's alien to them, yeah. and it's you know it seems a bit intrusive. I guess so. They think you know. I what, personally this wouldn't. <laughs> this isn't okay. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, moving on. As a part of your modesty, as well, how would you kind of? Is it something you should hide? And who should you hide it from? How would you go about it? You hide it in what sense? In Hide it? What do you mean? So for example, Ramadan time. Do you hide it? Do you hide the fact that you're on your period? Or is it something that, oh, you can just go into the kitchen and eat something? And I think, I don't know, it's a bit... Like for like before, long, long time ago, it would be like hiding it. But now it's just like, I don't wake up for Sehri. I'm not going to pretend to wake up for Sehri. I'm just going to eat. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I think when you're young, yeah. um, it's like, because I think for a lot of young girls, they, for some of them, they, they feel embarrassed. Yeah, they yeah. feel embarrassed because they don't want anyone in the family to be like, oh, my God, she's different now, <laughs> yeah. you know. But um, if it's if it's because you're, you know, you're a young girl and you're just shy, you don't want anyone to know, then I guess that makes sense. But um hiding it in the sense that you're gonna pretend to fast when you actually are not meant to be fasting is is not okay if you i understand now like i used to be like oh well you can just eat in front of anyone but at the same time that everyone has their own kind mm. of scale of like shame ha- and hair yeah, yeah. i mean we're not we're not gonna scream off the rooftops that we're on our period and we're not gonna be like you know uh, yeah I'm having a three course meal and <laughs> like some people's yeah. family don't want to be not just it's not like they care that you're on your period I think some people don't like seeing someone eating when <laughs> they're fasting yeah. no, fair so enough. That's don't shove sense. it in someone's face but then again, then again. but don't what? suffer the point is yeah, yeah, don't, don't suffer. suffer which I feel like a lot of people do especially if they're mm. in households with like elder people or maybe they're living with a husband and in-laws and stuff who expect they, you to hide it yeah that expectation that you you should hide it, you you shouldn't eat at all, and pretend that and pretend are. that you are, which is ridiculous because, honestly, especially when you're in so much pain, you need to be drinking water, you need to be mm. hydrating yourself. You actually you need do to need to eat, in you. Yeah, that that's the point because you yeah. know when you're on your period, like you're weak. Yeah, you're, you're, you're like the body burns much yeah. time, uh, double the amount mm. when you're not, and also. Um, you know, it's actually, I would say, I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's immodest for a man to ask you, are you eating? Oh, or uh, anyone. If you're fasting. If, if mm. you're fasting and if someone asks you, are you fasting? Or even if uh, um, to another man and they might be sick, it's just, it's not a nice thing to do. It's, yeah, it's that's kind, true. It's etiquette. You don't ask someone. If you see someone eating, it could be because they're, because they're ill. Don't assume that, don't, oh, they're a bad Muslim and they're not fasting. Yeah, it could be like, because they're ill. It's ridiculous. So, it's, it's not, it's not, nothing to do with you. It's not your, it's yeah. not yeah. your business. And I've experienced that, like, uh, there's some people in my family who can't fast and like they're not women and even for them it's hard because it I, f- I feel just generally shame, everyone yeah. p- uh, if you're seen outdoors like in this like the last few Ramadans we've had like the last few years have been in the summer like they're gonna have to go out with a water bottle otherwise yeah, he's course. not gonna be okay and also he some needs people, to eat yeah. because some food is medicine for some people. Exactly, like mm. some people are diabetic and they need to eat. Food. Exactly. So that's like, that's, 
I, I think that's just a general thing that we need to change when we yeah, see someone eating in Ramadan. Be. We should think the best yeah. of, you know, you're meant to give 70 excuses to your brother. Yeah, you're not meant course. to think, oh my God, okay, this person and they doesn't want to fast. Like, the girls who do hide it, please don't hide it. Like you need to eat, you, you know, mm. you need to hydrate yourself and you need to remain healthy, especially like I know the pain it must be awful. So come on, like, we understand that you're not fasting, but don't suffer just because, you know, everyone else, like, is fasting. And, you know, you can eat on... Would you can recommend eating, like, secretly? I think it's well, if that's what, what you're what comfortable you're, with. Yeah. But don't, don't feel extra pressure. If you're okay with and you don't feel like you're suffering or you, you, you're you waiting a long period of time because... Um, you know, there's men in your house and you can't eat. No, don't starve yourself. You know, prioritize your health first. That's yeah, the whole definitely. point. That's why Allah gave that blessing. You're not supposed to fast when you're uh, on your period because obviously your bod your body is going through. Um, it's, it's burning double the yeah. calories and it's it needs strength. It's, it's really weak. So don't your health is your amana as well. You have to take that in consideration. You need to look after yourself. And I think that you know, even if you at first you feel embarrassed, I think it will help the people in your family to understand there's nothing yeah. there's no shame in this there's you know they're your mehram they're your family they're your blood they, it's all you you don't need to hide this mm. it's not like you're saying it verbally you're just eating and look after your health right and i don't i again i would say it's, you, you don't ask another person why aren't they fasting i think that's just i it's, think it's, it's etiquette rude. it's rude like and there's, there's no, no it's not necessary yeah and you know when you're fasting you're supposed to exhibit the best character and the best behavior so I think that and who take, are you anyway to go to around pointing fingers at other people and saying why aren't you fasting? Hmm. It's ridiculous. Come on. Um, Actually, when I was in university, something happened oh, like that. I was just like, "What?" Well, I thought you were going to say no, that someone, I pointed a finger at someone. No, and so, said, no why someone. Are you how dare you? No, <laughs> like someone asked worrying. me. Someone asked me, and I was just like, "I'm sick." That's it. Yeah. Hmm. That's oh, it's, just, it's silly. Like, it's awkward and uncomfortable. I think as we've well. all experienced that, and that just shows that it's a problem that yeah. we've all had more than one experience where someone like, made us uncomfortable yeah. about not fasting or even praying. Hmm. Like, why aren't you praying? And it's like, you know, come on, <laughs> you just carry on praying and lead <laughs> me to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, what about in terms of education then? Because a lot of schools they do provide. Um, like the sex education and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And obviously letters go out to parents saying we're currently doing, you know, the sexual awareness thing and your health mm -hmm. awareness uh, week. And um, it's down to the parents to decide whether or not they want to keep the students or their children in these lessons or not. And I actually saw a few like of my peers when I was in high school get taken out because they weren't allowed to do wow. this. I think it depends, really. Some parents may want to have that conversation themselves, but then at the same time, some parents are just like, you know, you don't need to learn this. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. Why do you I, think that is? I think is if there a, a parent, reason? If I, think, I think if a parent wants to have that conversation themselves with their child, I think they have the right to because they know their child better than... Because ge that education is generic. So if they understand their child has different needs and they want to tailor it to that, then much respect to them. I think we shouldn't assume why they're taking it out. But I think what's important is that in the end, they do get that education. But, but what, I don't know. I Aside from what you said mm -hmm. in terms of, okay, fair enough, if they want to have the talk themselves, but what other reason could it be to take your child out? The One thing that comes to me is the whole, because they think it's the Western perception of... Yeah, that's what I, I was going to come to. Like, yeah. They might think... <laughs> that they're going to educate them in the wrong way, maybe. Yeah. And that they'll just be like, oh, here you go. This I think protection and so and so. Do you know, so, what, do you know I mean? what I mean? Yeah, I think a lot of the time they think that uh, their child will be corrupted. Mm. But what I've, you know, it's just, no, just in general, what I've noticed is that when when it parents, do you know, yes, when so. parents hide these things from their children, not uh, they hide it from them at school, but then at the same time, they're not telling them at home. You're, like it's just nature your child will eventually find out I mean their friends will tell them what they learn that mm. happens I mean that happened because I had the same thing in high school some kids didn't have it but they they didn't have that class but everyone told them anyway and I think it's it's quite dangerous when um 
when some parents decide to censor their child completely of yeah. uh, of sex education because this it's your responsibility i if their intent i understand that i understand their intent is to protect their child but the way to protect your child is through education and not through censorship yeah. and not you're to just, completely like block yeah it and out. it also it also teaches your child that uh that they can't speak to you about anything yeah mm. it just it shows that you know what they're point. just gonna their friends or their parents yeah. and your friends are the same age and as they'll you get school. curious and then they'll go do something behind your back and it's not yeah I, I think it's, it's quite dangerous even yeah. and well not everyone had even if you do allow your child to have the sex education classes I think it's still you don't have to give them a, a separate <laughs> sex education class but I think you should just let them because I remember my mom did the same she was like so you had this class at school and obviously yeah. for me it was awkward we're teenagers right I'm like, we're Ew, like don't, speak, don't speak to me about this mom gross <laughs> but it taught me that you know what she she knows yeah, what I'm learning yeah. and if uh, when I'm now I'm older I know I can talk to her about yeah. anything like she didn't give me another class at home <laughs> but I knew that I can talk to her, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So when you when you see kids being uh, like their parents hiding things from them, like I've seen it myself, it, they just they do exactly what their parent didn't want them to do. Yeah. Obviously, that's not always the case, and every child and parent relationship is so different. But that just seems to be a pattern that I've noticed that's growing so up. That's so true. Yeah. And I think one thing that you pointed out is that you know you might not. You might try to censor the, your child, but in the, in the end of the day, they spend eight hours in school and this, the, their peers and the environment will tell them anyways. Yeah. So would you rather have um, a, a child, teenager. a teenager, uh, tell them the perspective or an uh, educated person, mm. you know? And yeah, even like your mom and my, even my mom did the same is having opening that dialogue. And, you know, if they learn something and they're confused about it, then at least you get to engage with that development side when they're you know the transitioning from you know childhood to puberty right you want to be involved in that but if you already like create a barrier like Amina said then you know it's just going to go downhill from there because your child doesn't feel comfortable in talking about taboo or stereotype yeah. sort of um, concepts and that's why we're doing these podcasts because some of these topics you know girls get shy to speak about they get sometimes they get confused because they don't know like what what is what at different stages of puberty you know why Mm. is my body increasing in size you know maintenance of you know the body yeah Yeah, like how to deal with pain I also know that yeah some um some women have period pains that are so painful they have to take like naproxen and stuff that's like a strong painkiller how bad Mm. the pain is and also hygiene as well Mm. it's not just oh here you go here's a pad that's it just one per day (laughs) like no you know using your own initiative as well but like i know like some people might not even want to even speak about it they're just like oh here you go like this is you know here's the sanitary towels and stuff like figure it out yeah figure it out like you need to teach them like it's about learning like even putting it on the basic stuff, putting it on, mm. even disposing of it, mm. especially in public um, areas as well. Definitely, because I've God seen in some toilets that it's just it's disgusting. disgusting. Mm. Like, disgusting. And it's like, really, like, it's a simple thing. And also, when you're that young, because uh, when I was in high school, I knew some girls who who had to figure it out themselves and they were like, oh, I did it this way. And I, and then, and then I was like, well, that's not how to put it on. And they had some trouble with it. And if you're not oh, taught that at home... Yeah. Obviously, you can talk to your friends and of course, some of them may teach you. But then some you, of them are scared that they might just get, like, laughed Yeah, and at. then you can have a bad experience. Like, if you don't put one on properly, then, you know, Next you might have, you might soil your clothes at yeah. school. And that's just, you know, that's embarrassing on so many levels. And also, one thing that's not spoken about as well is discharge. Hmm. Like, I'm sorry, this is, I, I know it seems very raw, as in mm. we're talking about it. But come on, like, we're girls and, like, this is, like it's something we all go through mm. and it's something that's not spoken about as well mm. like cleanliness and you know why are you having these things and yeah things some like girls that. may not know what it is and they'll think well this is why am i so gross yeah. because that's what it seems like if you don't mm. know what it but is but honestly girls it's your body actually yeah scientifically it's cleaning, your body cleaning itself. itself so so you know we're all girls and we all get it and it's nothing to be ashamed of and yeah. i think it's important to remember that you know it's it's okay to ask. Mm. It's okay mm. to ask someone. 
you know there are nurses available as well even the nhs like they they even would talk to you about sex education and especially in terms of periods as well mm. like they they even can help you out as well school teachers you know mm. you're, i think it's ps H E or something, yeah, or PSE I think it has or something like that. In different schools, yeah, um, like the teachers for that as well. You have your parents at home, and I know some are shy and they wouldn't want to, but mm. even your friends, like you know, you all might have all these different all questions the as well. And, the sisters. and go together, maybe. Yeah, and like you know, mm. don't read so many things off the internet because I used to read about period pains. Like, why are my period pains so bad? And it used to be like. Well, you've got this where you've read all the internet about it. That's why, that's <laughs> why we're, that's like, why we're doing this podcast because you know we just assume the worst yeah. and we just use Google search. And I but think one thing that we want to note that um, is you know if it, if parents are feeling reserved and shy to talk about to talk about these things to their children, imagine how the child feels yeah. when they're going through something they don't even understand. What's and that's going your on. own child. Like, come on. No, like, if you if you don't feel okay, I understand. It's, if if a parent does not feel comfortable and because obviously inten- they've internalized that this is shame and it's very rooted in them. No, and come on, that's no, their could, child. No, but the thing is, it, it can think happen when it's that passed way. down for generations. If it's passed down, if it's internalized, really? yeah, if it's internalized, I completely understand. But at least appoint someone else that you trust, or maybe their auntie, their cousin, yeah. to or talk a big about sister, it. you yeah, know, a like big a, sister a role to, model, to a talk mentor. Talk about it. So when, so when you, when you, if you know that you can't give something to your child, at least find an alternative yeah. to provide to your child because that's the least you could do. Yeah, so the main thing from these podcasts, well, from today's second podcast, I'd say, is talk to someone. And another point is Islamic education. So, yeah, I we spoke about hygiene um, and educating our like younger sisters and whoever who's just started their yeah, period sure. about educating them on it at school and like you mentioned, talking to teachers yeah. or even going visiting nurses. Yeah. And I think there's, because we're all Muslim, I think there's a, another side to it. In ter- even with hygiene, I mean, once you're finished with your period, you need to do hustle. And mm. oh yeah, but I don't know how many girls no, are taught that how to do and how to do well. hustle. I know that um, there's, I don't remember the channel on YouTube, but um, there was this really good uh, channel. Of this I lady, like she teaches you how to yeah. do hustle, why you need to do it when and she's even she she did like these this <laughs> little drawings kind of yeah i forgot the name yeah. but it was really good i know good. what you're talking about because like i saw that as well i was like this is so good like it's yeah. so helpful it was so useful obviously i was alhamdulillah my mum already taught me yeah. how to do it but um when we were younger i don't think we had that kind of thing just so yeah. accessible i think that kind of, it's so important we to know to these so things childish as well because i just used to laugh all the time when my mom was telling me like all these things and like just you know i was like, like wow ah. i'm a woman now yeah. <laughs> i was like okay tell <laughs> this me this is a big moment for me my mom made me write notes and stuff and then like ah. you know when you get those books of like the w- woman's handbook to yeah Islam, I that too. And, like, <laughs> all of those kind of books and I was like, yeah i think that's and really important us on it like ah. yeah so like we know what to do because it's like because it's important that course, it's going to happen every month, mm. you know? Yeah, because yeah, we need to know how to, you know, Islamically, yeah, especially we Brussels, have to be clean. Really important. Yeah, and you need to know, like, when can you... And when I you mean, come off your period as well. Yeah, Because so some I, people are still unsure. Yeah, and some people have quite long periods. Yeah. And it's like when... what Also, what counts as a period, I think some people yeah, true, struggle that, with that. Yeah, colours and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, because some people have it, Um, you know, they have their normal period and then they have another time in the month where it's like confusing yeah. and you think do I can I pray during this time like is mm. this a period what what is this first of all <laughs> there's so many confusing things that happen sometimes it happens like later on in your like as you get yeah. older because I know mine was pretty s- straightforward when I was younger but now it's like okay what is this <laughs> like, I just got out of the shower oh hello <laughs> yeah <laughs> really? exactly but there's these things that are so confusing and Islamically, and your we need changing to... as well as mm. you grow yeah. older. I think the main question You're is always for childbirth now, guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, just, <laughs> you are then. No, but your body kind of well, not really. It's no, like your cleansing. body's just developing and it's just growing. Yeah, from that. Yeah, no, but like your body, what well, is kind of preparing itself? I mean, you know, like you're losing an egg each month. Like, yeah, like, no, what I mean, some people don't exactly even know what periods it? are. Yeah, what like the basics. That I think a lot of people. Like, what are the basics? People who had a period but they didn't like know what it was. Know what it was. Like, where hello, is it this coming is the from? time. 
No, like, what is it? You what know? is it? Go on, Heiser. <laughs> what is it? Go, continue. Your, I'm asking you. It's your it? uterus wall. Disintegrating. Isn't yeah. It? Like and it, it builds up during the month. You release an egg. Yeah. So and you, then it yeah. you know, washes itself yeah. out. Well, we're not, we're not like <laughs> biologists here. I think we're all in humanity, so we're not, you know. But oh, we do have experience yeah. in this. Understanding. Yes, yeah. of course. But yeah, I wanted, I wanted to finish on the Islamic yeah. point of view, it's which very is very important. Yeah, just you need. I think we should have this open conversation. Definitely. You know, I think the main question is when you're that young is like, okay, so can I pray now? Or yeah. What can I fast? Like what can I do? Or what yeah. can I? What do I need to do? I think that's just we need to open the door for that because some girls may not even know that and obviously when you do start your period you it's hard for you to yeah. start praying and that's it's a confusing time you start putting pressure on yourself and you're like oh my god well have i missed a whole day of prayers or not you mm-hmm. know it can be a bit it can be stressful definitely yeah but it shouldn't be yeah. it shouldn't be stressful at all if you know what's going yeah. on yeah don't ever feel ashamed that you know you're on your period or that you have a period or like you know y- you can't speak to anyone about it it's nothing to be shameful shameful it's nothing ashamed to be, of yeah <laughs> can't there speak you English go. today unfortunately um no but it's nothing to be ashamed of and we should all you know as, as girls as well like i'm sure we all moan about the pain and things like that but if you know if you don't understand something when it comes to periods I feel like there is no harm in asking elders aunties um your older sisters elder cousins your friends even teachers Mm. even every like someone that you trust yeah because I know it's something that obviously you don't want to just kind of blurt out and be like like it's not something that you can just easily spark a conversation with do you know yeah, what i mean it is at the same time like, a very private some people thing. does like some people does want <laughs> definitely can't speak english today but um for some people it takes a lot of courage to even mm. ask about something or even when you don't you didn't know that you were going to start but then you started and you don't have um you know the necessary protection with you so it's just like even fear of asking someone like don't be afraid you know, there are girls that like we we all go through the same thing. Hmm. You know, I think uh, and I think you know a young lot of young girls they might because uh, I think as you grow older you kind of sense it. Oh, this yeah. is this is gonna happen. It's but for them they don't. Time. Yeah, they don't they don't understand that. But you know, if you are in public and you and you, and you think you're going mm. and you you see that happening, believe me, every girl understands and they will hundred yeah. percent. If they have one, they'll rip it out and give it to you. Like this 100%. is your womanhood. They'll, you they'll are share, a woman. They'll give you a sanitary <laughs> pad. I'm just saying it blatantly. They will give you a sanitary yeah. pad if you ask another girl because they understand. They're like, they even ask you, "Are you okay? Do you need yeah. a thing?" Because like that's, they just know. They it's just standard. Know. It's it's you know? completely fine for you it's to like ask. It's like a woman's like kind of like yeah. circle you kind can of ask thing. Like anyone, you, do you know yeah. what I mean? Any girl. Yeah. yeah. Like we all like we all go through some sort of pain or those unicorns who don't apparently. Um, <laughs> but <unicorns>. you know. <laughs> But like, you know, this is your womanhood, okay? Don't be ashamed of it. It's something that's gonna like, you know, you're gonna get children from it. I think. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Pfizer. Yeah, reward as well from <laughs> when you go through pain, isn't it? There's a there's a yeah. deep that if you, if you even feel a prick of pain, then your sins are being ex- like it's being removed. Expiated. Yeah. Well, I feel a lot of pain. So it's a blessing <laughs> in that sense as well. Definitely. But yeah, that's all for this week. Uh, on this week, this that's episode? all for yeah. That's that's all for this podcast episode. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Join us next time on our next podcast, inshallah. So that's Sister Speak, and you were just listening to me, Faiza, me Amina, and me Mariam. And yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We stream our daily broadcast on inspirefm.org. You'll find all our daily updates on our social media at Inspirefm Luton.